The other issue is uh, that there are, that these extraterrestrial civilizations are a threat. Uh, let me assure everyone, they view us as a threat. Humans are viewed as a threat, not them. Uh, and if they were a threat, think about it. We start downing, shooting these things down with electromagnetic systems, scalar, they're called, electromagnetic systems, in the 40s and 50s, 60s. If they were hostile, they were so far, they're so far advanced with that, they just shut this whole civilization down. Now, it's in the interest of the warmongering, endless war, psychopaths and sociopaths to convince the world population that there's a threat from out there. Because that's how you unite the whole world. Unfortunately, poor Ronald Reagan was gaslit with this narrative. If you look at what's in Unacknowledged, our documentary, anyone can see it for free on all these sites now. He had a team of people. I knew the head of that team who's passed away now, Colonel Holman, Air Force guy. And they were sent in there to convince Reagan of a threat like this to get funding for SDI, the so-called Star Wars Strategic Defense Initiative. But one of the reasons why Ronald Reagan at the United Nations said, wouldn't it, our job of creating world unity be easier if we had a common alien threat to unite against? Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? So, now, I don't think he was a bad man. I think he was had false information given to him, which is also the big risk right now with disclosure, is the same operators going and providing portfolios of false information to the Congress and to the White House and to the media, to the people. We know that's already happening. And so one of the big risks, and I wrote a paper in 1999, it's up on our website, this site, seriousdisclosure.com or drstephengreer.com, you will see that I wrote in 1999 that if this goes sideways, they're gonna take the disclosure of this subject and flip it into a War of the Worlds, Independence Day the movie thing and create global chaos and create a situation to unite the world around some non-existing threat from outer space because that was always the plan. You know, Carol Rosen, a member of my team who was the spokesperson for Werner von Braun, the guy who invented the rocket for Adolf Hitler, and who then became part of our aerospace industry back in the uh, 45. Uh, he uh, warned on his deathbed that they would hoax an alien threat, and it's all a lie, and that was the plan that they had uh, uh, come up with in the 50s. And then he would repeat to me over and over, and the last card, the last card, the last card would be the extraterrestrial threat. So we're now 70 years into this sort of a, 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 a long-term plan to create a hoax, basically. So I tell people, yeah, there are extraterrestrials, aliens, if you want to call them. Uh, there are man-made uh, craft. Those are the ones that are a threat. Those are the ones doing abductions, human trafficking, drug trafficking. They're being misused all over the place. Uh, if you look at what we just did at the National Press Club in Washington, you see that on my YouTube channel. We have a Marine who was on a rescue mission after the big uh, Indonesian earthquake and tsunami in, in 2009. And uh, Michael Herrera and his platoon came across one of these gigantic, about 300 foot diameter, man-made UFOs. Uh, all floating weapons, and there were crates. And we later learned, he first thought they were drugs. We later learned from other sources, those were people in there being put into slavery to be used in experimentation. Human, oh yeah, children, women, yeah. Specific ones, yeah, to be used. So, I mean, th these sort of, op these rogue operations are a serious problem. And luckily, all that information is being handed over to the authorities at the Pentagon and in the Congress and the White House.
in the White House military office uh, that I deal with. But, you know, whether or not there'll be a <clears throat> satisfactory action or outcome by the leaders in the political system is to be determined. I don't know. Uh, we're doing everything we can. I think everyone listening to this show should write to their senators and their congressmen and to the White House president and say, you need to look into this and the details of it because, but also be aware of the false narrative that's going to be presented to you. Because the false narrative is where we run into problems. You know, if, if, if the establishment gets convinced that there is this kind of threat, which doesn't exist from outer space, they could pivot the whole world into a situation where, you know, but everyone would be a, a, a sort of a lockdown situation through the fear of, of a sort of a ho hoaxed threat from outer space. Uh, and I think that's why we did two years ago The Cosmic Hoax, which is a documentary about this. It's on our uh, YouTube channel. Because I think that the big risk here of disclosure is that it is taken and then sort of spun in the wrong direction, a false direction. But you have to ask the question, who would benefit from that? Well, the same profiteers and, and uh, sociopaths that have been benefiting from the secrecy all along. Uh, and, and I think this is a real problem because I think that ultimately, if the people aren't informed, and this is what Eisenhower said, you know, he talked about beware the military industrial complex. He was an anti-military, he was a five-star general, a World War II hero a two-term Republican president. It wasn't an Abby Hoffman that said that or some hippie. It, it was General Eisenhower. But the reason he said that, and then he said only an informed citizenry can protect our democracy. So the question is, how do we inform the citizenry? We face a hostile ideology, global in scope, atheistic in character, ruthless in purpose and insidious in method. Unhappily, the danger it poses promises to be of indefinite duration. We annually spend on military security alone more than the net income of all United States corporations. A shadowy government with its own Air Force, its own Navy, his own fundraising mechanism and the ability to pursue his own ideas of the national interest free from all checks and balances and free from the law itself. In the councils of government, we must gar guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex.